Welcome to this week's Holahan's Hot Topic. I'm here with Dr. Melissa Holahan. Hey, doctor, what's buzzing in the world of critical care this week? Well, this week we're going to be talking about a case control study looking at the effects of pimobendin on survival time in cats with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and congestive heart failure. Certainly, um, and, and sadly, a very common thing that we see in the emergency service. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy are two of the most common underlying causes of congestive heart failure in our cats. Pimobendin, although it's become a standard of care in managing congestive heart failure in dogs, um, as it is a, a great positive ionotrope, it has vasodilatory effects as well as antiplatelet effects. Um, although it's controversy regarding the use of positive ionotropes in cats with congestive heart failure still remains. Therefore, this study set out to eventually to essentially look at the effects of pimobendin on cats with congestive heart failure compared compared to those without um, pimobendin in the use of their treatment. And pimobendin has been approved by the U.S. Um, FDA Center of Veterinary Medicine in dogs with congestive heart failure secondary to dilated cardiomyopathy and chronic mitral valve disease, but again, has not been uh, approved yet for cats with congestive heart failure. So what the researchers wanted to evaluate was assess the survival time and also any adverse events that may be related to the administration of pimobendin in cats with congestive heart failure, again, secondary to HCM or hypertrophic cardio, obstructive cardiomyopathy. This was a retrospective study. However, they did have uh, case controls um, during their study period as well. Medical records were reviewed over the course of 10 years, from 2003 to 2013, to identify those cats that were treated with pimobendin, um, and comparing those cats to those not treated, which were the controlled congestive heart failure cats. And those cats were matched to the case cats based on age, sex, body weight, the type of cardiomyopathy, and also manifestation of congestive heart failure. In this particular study, the diagnosis of congestive heart failure was made by confirming the presence of pulmonary edema or pleural pericardial or peritoneal fusions by greater than one imaging technique, and that was using um, chest x-rays, ultrasound, or echocardiogram. Data collected from both of these study populations was signalment, physical exam findings, echocardiogram data, the serum biochemical values, survival time from initial diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Overall, there was 27 cats receiving treatment with pimobendin, and these, again, were the case cats. There was 21 male castrated cats. Again, this is a uh, sex predilection, predilection disease, so therefore there were more male cats. And the mean age at time of diagnosis was 9 years. There were 22 um, HCM cats and 5 obstructive cardiomyopathy cats. Pulmonary edema was present in 12 cats. And then the average pimobendin dosage was 1.25 milligrams, to up to 3.75 milligrams per kilogram per day. And this was um, done by BID or TID dosing. And overall, there were 16 cats that died during the study period. This was in comparison to 27 cats receiving treatment without pimobendin, and these were used as the case control cats. There was 21 male castrated, six female spayed, with a median age at time of diagnosis of 8.8 .8 years. Again, the distribution between the two uh, were very similar. There was 22 with HCM and 5 with obstructive cardiomyopathy, and overall 14 of those cats had pulmonary edema. 26 cats died in this group during the study period. So cats receiving pimobendin had a significant survival benefit. The median survival in cats with pimobendin treatment was 626 days. And the median survival for control cats, again, those were the ones not receiving pimobendin, was 103 days. So clearly there was a very large survival difference and approximately six time difference in survival time between the two groups. So this study did conclude in the results section that there was no significant difference detected for administration um, of additional medications. Obviously, these cats would likely have been on several other therapies, and those included ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, as well as anticoagulants. But again, there was no difference between the two groups. Conclusions of this study was that pimobendin added to traditional congestive heart failure treatment does appear to be a good idea, and it may provide a substantial clinical benefit in the survival time 
for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy cats with congestive heart failure. The treatment is well tolerated as there were no adverse effects noted in this study. And the study authors also went on to say that BID dosing appears to be appropriate in cats given the extended um, half-life of the drug in our feline patients. There is possibly a clinical benefit in survival time in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy-affected cats. However, due to the small number of cats in this study, it's difficult to say if the um, survival differences were definitive. So there are further studies are warranted in this group of congestive heart failure patients. So I think that ultimately in our hospital, our cardiologists are certainly evaluating pimobendin more closely in cats. And although I think it is still case um, selective, I think it's very important if owners are able to, especially with the new BID dosing in cats, um, considering pimobendin in the treatment of congestive heart failure. Because clearly there is a pretty wide survival time um, difference between those two groups. And I think that further research will support that. And that's all this week on Hollihan's Hot Topics.